Our next guest expects to see a broadening out of market participation this year, as well as divergence in returns among big tech firms. Uh, for more on the markets, let's bring in Michael Landsberg, Chief Investment Officer of Landsberg Bennett Private Wealth Management. Good to see you, Michael. Good to be here. Um, yesterday must have been uh, a welcome uh, a uh, little opening for the year. If you're expecting a broadening out of the market, the equal weighted S&P was about flat. The Nasdaq 100 was down 1.7 percent. Health care was up after lagging last year. So is this the kind of activity that we can count on continuing or is it just a little bit of a uh, maybe a, a brief catch up move? I think a little bit of both. I think actually, <clears throat> given what we had yesterday, obviously, you know, reports of a downgrade on Apple. There's some concerns about Apple in particular, but I think it makes sense to broaden out some of the tech exposure. Utilities were, were good yesterday. Healthcare. And some of your some of your areas that have been really big performers last year, you're going to need a broadening out. Seven stocks can't really drive the market performance for the whole year. It's not helpful. Well, that's fair. Although since October, it hasn't really been yeah. that way. Right? I mean, the equal weighted yeah. S&P finished up 12 percent or something last yeah. year. I think that half of the S&P was up 15 percent last year. So I guess the question is, how do you have to read the broader economy to feel as if most stocks can participate or cyclical groups or laggard groups can catch up? Well, I think a lot of that S&P, there's a good group of the stocks that are down 20, 30 percent this year. So there has been a, a more you know, narrow breadth than it should be. I think we're slowing. You know, I think if we saw the price of oil come down prior to the, what's going on in the Red Sea, it's a slowing economy. Oil prices are starting to go down. I think you're going to see you know, uh, you know, ne almost a negative GDP in the first quarter, very close to zero here. But there's going to be areas that have growth. In a slow-growing economy, Stocks that grow do really, really well, and it's just hard to find those. When you can find them, you want to be able to hold on to those. And I think that's where Apple may run into some problems. You know, they had negative you know, you know, earnings growth for the last year. Stock was still up 50 percent. I don't think that can continue in 24. So where is there reliable, predictable growth that the market hasn't already priced well, in a rich way? Yeah, that's, that's kind of the trick. So yeah. a few names that I, that I like that haven't had these huge run-ups, United Healthcare would be one of them. It basically does well almost in, you know, in all seasons. It's a stock that when we look back you know, over the last four, five, six, seven years, it's done really well over a period of time. One out of five people in the United States is covered by United Health, have a solid dividend, solid management, and we think that continues. They did well in 22 on a relative basis. They did pretty well in 23, given the fact that everything was, was, was really moving high. And it's a low beta name, which for me, a lot of people are now, they've got a lot of beta in the portfolio because of what's happened in the last you know, year. It made sense to have that. It maybe makes sense to broaden that out a bit. Sure. Is there any uh, blowback potential just because it's an election year, because we know big pharma companies are going to come under pressure? Those big pharma companies are pointing to other places for the reason for high pharmaceutical prices, including the insurers and including the pharmacy benefits managers that a lot of them own. Is there any concern that all of that comes back and puts pressure on these stocks this year? Absolutely. That's a good point. It's happened historically. We've seen, you know, kind of politicians run and say, health care is the problem, it's these rising drug costs, and what are we going to do about it? Um, my bigger issue is going to be how they handle kind of the GLPs and what's happening with, you know, the businesses with, with Lilly and Novo, with Ozempic and Manjaro, is how do they handle that? I think that, to me, is a bigger concern longer term. You mean do they wind up paying for these How much do they wind up paying? Drugs, because, because we all know politicians are going to they're going to tell you what they want to hear. It may put some short-term pressure on it. But how much are they going to have to pay? That may be some longer-term pressure. So I think that that has weighed a little bit on the stocks, I think. And other than the Fed, what do you see as the biggest risk this year? I, I see a slowing growth environment. I, I, I'm not sure. I think everyone's a little too bullish about what the Fed's going to do. I think we're going to see them. And I, I think Powell's a, a, a student of history. So if you look back and say, what, what did they do in the 70s and 80s they didn't do right? They didn't raise, you know, they didn't keep rates high enough or get them high enough. We in the summer, everyone was clamoring for, we don't have to raise rates anymore because the market did it for us. Rates have fallen now, and I don't hear anybody saying, well, we can be on And financial now. conditions have loosened quite a bit as yeah, well. Yeah, and, and we're not in, the, in this serious environment where I think you have to, to lower rates right away. I think they're going to let it play out, and I think it's going to be, you know, six months maybe before you see the first one. And again, in an election year, I don't think they're going to want to do too much because I think there's the, the, the surrounding, you know, in the controversy, well, you're helping one candidate right. out, not the other one. So I think they're in a little bit of a, of a rock and a hard place, and so that, that to me is a concern.